Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. So today, we have a new group of 16 Zumbinis at Shelter Rock, ready to take on the Deep Dark Forest on the very hard rating. And I'll just come right out and say it. I'm scared. I am not looking forward to this, because the path we're about to take, in my opinion, is the hardest in the game. Yes, I actually think the Deep Dark Forest on very hard is harder than it is on very, very hard. And I can already, I'm already going to say it. I'm going to screw up. I am going to fail probably many times because one of the puzzles down here is just really poorly put together. More on that in a bit, but let's go. We are in the deep, dark forest. The Zumbini soon encounter. The Fleens. Legends. The Fleens were once closely related to Zumbinis. Oh my. Once again, I can't click on the help sign. This happened the last time I played this. All right, well, what changed him here from the last two difficulties is now the Fleen traits might not resemble the Zumbini traits exactly. So in the past, it's been Zumbini hair corresponds to Fleen hair, Zumbini eyes correspond to Fleen eyes, Zumbini noses co correspond to Fleen noses, and Zumbini feet correspond to Fleen feet. Not necessarily anymore. While two Zumbini traits will directly correspond to the same Fleen traits, two of them might be mixed up. So it could be... Zubini hair corresponds to Fleen hair, and Zubini eyes correspond to Fleen eyes, but it could be Zubini noses correspond to Fleen feet, and Zubini feet correspond to Fleen noses. That is going to make this puzzle a lot more challenging. So once again, we're going to start by just putting... Actually, let's start by putting a Fleen or a Zubini out that is, has three features in common with another Zubini. Looking at you, man. Because this will directly give away one of the trait correlations. So now we just have to find the flame that has one feature different from this flame. And it looks like it's this one. So Zumbini noses do correspond to Fleen noses. That's good. So blue nose means green nose on a Fleen. Excellent. Well, we do need one blue nose Zumbini with different everything else. Could be him. It could not be her. Oh, hey, she's got everything in common with that guy except two features, so that's interesting. Uh, looks like it'll be that guy. All right, so it looks like... Oh, wait a second. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy is going to correspond to her. Same hairdo on the Fleens, even though the Zumbinis have different hair. Well, isn't that interesting? Well, this guy's the only other... Well, she also could be the one. So it's either this guy or her that's going to trigger this Fleen to jump down. So we... Let's see... I'm going to... Okay. So she has two things in common. Oh, wait a second. Hang on. Never mind. It might not be noses correspond to flea, uh, flea noses because that guy has one feature different, but this guy also has one feature different, which is a problem. Let's try putting her out. I'm going to hope for the best. Uh, actually, hang on. What we can do is, this is the one we're hoping to get down. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five fleens with Viking hair. There's one, two, three fleens with a cyborg visor, and one... One, only two fleens with brown boots. So whichever Zumbini with the blue nose is the one that goes up there, I'm hoping with a blue nose, will only share a trait with one other. It's not spring. It's not normalize. 
I'm guessing it's Cyclops. So I'm going to try this guy because if if my calculations are correct, if my hypothesis is correct, Zumbini noses do correspond to Fleen noses, and then so blue noses will correspond to green noses on Fleens, and then this guy is going to trigger that Fleen to jump down. Oh, that is not what I expected, but okay. I thought that fleen was going to be the one to jump down, but I will happily take that. All right, so Zumbini noses correspond to fleen eyes. Good to know. So we need another uh, Zumbini with a blue nose. Excellent. And everything else is different. So... It's going to be her, or it's going to be her. It's not going to be her, because that corresponds to this fleen. Or actually, that fleen. So she's going to trigger this fleen to jump down. All right, all right, we are making great progress. All right. So we, the only thing we really know is that Zumbini noses correspond to Fleen eyes. So there are three Fleens with the Cyborg Visor. So we have one Fleen with a purple, or one Zumbini with a purple nose, two, three with a green nose, four. All right, so it's going to be a green nose Zumbini that triggers that guy to jump down. A green nose Zumbini that has one feature in common with this Zumbini. Could be this one. Couldn't be that one, couldn't be that one. Oh, it's this one. This one's going to trigger that flame to jump down. Nice, 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 nice. We beat the flames again. How fortunate for Zumbinis that you are their guide. Excellent. I really like that puzzle. The Fleen's puzzle's great on every difficulty, but it just keeps getting more and more challenging. The next level. This next level is the one that I've been dreading the most by far. Having foiled the Fleen's, the Zumbinis journey on through the forest. There are rumors in these parts of a musical innkeeper. Rumors, yeah. All the other Zumbinis have gone through here. At least the ones that have gone through the forest. Hey, kids! Nice to see ya! Doesn't the music kind of draw you back? Go ahead, grab a bunk. But be careful. Some of the rooms got wrecked by fleens. <clears throat> Little toads. We got a big tour coming up. Work, 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 play. Okay. Worst puzzle in the game by far. Fortunately, it doesn't look like it'll be that bad. Hotel Dementia, level 3. After a long journey, the Zumbinis need rooms to stay in overnight. However, only Zumbinis with two features in common, such as red noses and ponytail hair, can room together. One feature tells you a Zumbini's placement by floor, row, and one feature tells you the placement by tree trunk, column. Zumbinis in the same row or the same column will have variations of the same attribute. For example, Zumbinis with red noses may all stay on the first floor, green noses on the second, orange on the third, and so on. At the same time, Zumbinis with ponytails stay in the first column, flat tops in the second, shaggy in the third, and so on. For a greater challenge, some rooms are boarded up, which limits your choices. That's supposed to add another challenge? Guess what? You know what that adds? Random luck. I'm not even joking. You could literally screw yourself out of getting every Zumbini through this just by putting the wrong Zumbini in the first room. Absolutely terrible design. Horrible design. So this one is basically just luck-based. However, because there are only three rooms boarded up, that's going to make it a lot easier. Multiple times when I tested this, there were like ten rooms boarded up, and it was nigh on impossible to solve. Well, we're going to start with this Zumbini, and put him in the room, and try to figure out what traits it can share. Alright, so nose does not matter. Is it eyes and feet? It's not eyes and feet. So here's the thing. I don't want to put anybody into that second row until I know for sure that they can all go in there. So it could be eyes and hair. Let's try eyes and hair. 
It's eyes and hair. Okay, now that we know it's eyes and hair, we stand a chance. <laughs> so same eyes can go, and same hair can go in there. Now the question is, is it hair differs by tree trunk, or hair differs by row? Let's find out. All right. So we've got one, two, three. Three different Zumbinis with green hat hair. We could put them in that row if it allows. Okay, so eyes, different eyes go in different rows. Okay. So then, bald headed people. One. Let's see. We need to find, essentially... Okay. So sleepy guys go in this column. One type of... whoever, Whichever eye will go in that column will be an eye that doesn't... Isn't, doesn't belong to a certain hair. So let's see. Green hat hair, we've got glasses, we've got sleepy eyes, and we've got normal eyes. Okay. Okay. Uh, bowl cut. We have glasses and a cyclops eye. Oh, excellent. So if we do... Okay, so I'm not worried about that. That will be easy to get around. I'm worried about these two doors. So, bald head in this, in this row. We need to find a hairdo, essentially, that only has three different types of eyes, one of which is... Wait, no. Bald heads are in this tree trunk. So we actually need to find an eye type that only belongs to three different hairs. So normal eyes go with green hat hair and a bald head and a ponytail. Okay, so normal eyes are not going to work. Sunglasses will work because there's only one Zumbini that has a sunglasses. That has sunglasses. Excellent. So we could put the Zumbini anywhere in these rooms. We want to put it in this second row, though. Either here or here. Alright, now here's the thing. If we put it there, we need to make sure we don't have ponytails with a ton of different eyes. So we've got ponytails have sunglasses and glasses and normal eyes. Okay, so that'll work. So we're putting her here. Excellent. So now it has kind of been decided. So now glasses, you've got a ponytail, you are going to go up here. Then glasses normalize, you're gonna go up here. Okay, we're good. So now, bald headed dude, you've got glasses, you're going in there. Bald headed dude with normalize, you're going in here. Bowl cut, that's a new column, and you've got glasses, so you're going in there. Green hat hair with glasses. Green hat hair with normal eyes. Green hat hair with normal eyes. Normal eyes with spiky hair. Cyclops with spiky hair. You're going in there. Cyclops with a bowl cut. You're going in there. And then green hat hair with sleepy eyes. You're going in there. Oh, hey, thank goodness. Hey, that's cool. A place for everyone and everyone in a place. Okay, I'm just going to say, we got unbelievably lucky with that one. Oh, yeah. Literally, the only way you're going to beat this is basically to keep resetting until you get a situation where you only have a small number of rooms closed. And even then, it's luck-based based on how quickly can you figure out which traits are, need to be shared, how quickly can you figure out which row and which column they go in, and how quickly and how much room you have to deal with it. And also just figuring out, is it even possible after you put the first Zumini in? Terrible design of that puzzle. Absolutely terrible design, and when I show off this individual level on this individual difficulty in greater detail in a later video, you're going to see just how annoying it is. And I wish there was a way to beat this guaranteed every time, but I haven't found a way. If there is one, it requires a The Zumbinis not. continue along the forest trail for a, a few days thing. until they reach a spot where they are completely stonewalled. Ho ho ho. That's funny right there. Luckily, Mudball Wall is going to be a cinch. Oh, that's a big wall. So this
this looks a lot tougher than the last difficulty. I actually think it's easier than the last difficulty, and let's find out why. Mudball Wall, level 3. The Zumbinis need your help in getting over the wall to freedom. Using the Mudball Launcher, hit the sections of the wall with dots on them. The color, shape, and color of the shape tells you what section of the wall it will hit. For example, green mud balls may always hit in the first row, square shapes in the first column, and blue square shapes may always hit in the first square within a column. In this case, the upper leftmost square of the mud ball would be hit with a green mud ball with a blue square in the middle. To help you organize, divide the wall into five columns, each five squares wide. So this is literally just the first difficulty, just with an extra dimension added to it. It doesn't even alternate the pattern like it did on the last difficulty on the diagonal. It's back to, it's kind of goes backwards. So essentially you can see you've got the rows, you've got the columns, and now you've also got sections of the wall. This is the first section, that's the second section, third section, fourth section, fifth section. So essentially, yeah, let's just see how this works. So from watching the first one. All right. Now let's change the color of the shape to blue. All righty. So changing the color of the shape changes which column it goes in. Now keep in mind, because there's only five different colors you can make the shape, it's not going to go, it's not going to determine, oh, green uh, circles will just always hit on this line. It's just because there's not enough colors. So essentially, the color will determine which column. But remember, there's only five columns, but there's just multiple sections of the wall. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the red color, because that appears to correspond to the first column. And now let's change the actual mud ball color to red. Excellent! Oh. So that actually tells us a lot. We now know that uh, the color green is going to correspond to this second row. The color of the sh or the color of the shape is going to correspond to the column, and then the shape corresponds to the section of the wall. So what we want to do is all circles will hit this part of the wall. So we want to hit this next. So what we're going to have to do is find a. It's going to be color red, but we're going to have to find a different color for the shape. So let's try green. Okay, so that didn't work. Let's make the shape purple. Yes! This really just requires a lot of trial and error. But you've got a lot of mud to work with. Alright, so no more circles. Now what we're going to do... Let's see. There's no tile. There's no colored tile that appears in the same location on more than one section of the wall. So what we're just going to do is pick like, star, like a star, and we're going to try to do green mud ball, red shape. So hopefully I, that'll hit there. Nope. But that helps, because now we can hit these two things. So remember, green corresponds to the second row. Stars will hit this section of the wall, and a purple shape will hit the second column. Next, we're going to make the color of the shape blue, which will strike right there. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Now, the one column we haven't seen is yellow, but that's going to hit the fourth column because we've seen every other column hit by every other color of shape. Now, we're also going to need a different color. Let's make the mud ball blue. Hopefully, that'll hit the first row. Nope, that's okay. Now let's make it a purple mud ball. Nope, alright. So, star, yellow mud ball, yellow shape. He's gonna hit right there. Okay. Well, now we know all, pretty much, other than what shape corresponds to what part of the wall, we have all the rest of our data. So let's do red. Let's try to hit that red mud ball, blue shape. Oh yes! Triangle, blue mud ball, blue middle. Okay, nope. 
diamond. That'll hit right there. And we still have... Okay, enough for actually two more mud balls, so it would have been fine if we'd screwed up there anyways. So now we're going to do green mud ball, triangle, cover red, and that'll hit right there. <laughs> we have one mud ball left in the machine. Keep in mind, we did get unlucky a few times, like mainly over here, with choosing pretty much every color except the one we needed. But yeah, that's the Deep Dark Forest on Very Hard. I am so glad we got through Hotel Dementia on the first try. I can't believe that. I tested it like ten times and failed miserably every single time. It would be... Yeah, it, it was. It's not very good design. More welcome than the first. Shade Tree Base Camp is indeed a peaceful place. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Let's go to Zumbiniville. What new thing do we have in Zumbiniville today? Oh, that's new. This city hall commemorates celebrates the Zumbinis who sent the fleens flying, wrangled with ransacked rooms, and vaulted the wall with hardly a fall when traveling was very hard. April 9th, 2018. Oh yeah. We only have three buildings left to get in Zumbiniville. We have going on very, very hard in the deep dark forest, and then very hard and very, very hard in Who's By You. We're going to Who's By You in the next episode. Thanks for watching, I'm Colorful Artie, I hope to see you there. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.